Players ask me all the time how to play professional basketball overseas or just how to play overseas. This video is going to break down the various steps on how you can do just that. And by the end of this video, you may not have a professional team yet, but you're going to know the steps that you need to take to get to that level. So if you like this video, hit the like button below. And also if you want to see more videos, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Any questions or comments you want to make, go ahead and drop those down below as well. Step one, play at the highest level that you possibly can in your home country. Now if you're an American player, that means to play at the highest university level that you can. So try and make it to NCAA Division I, if not NCAA Division II. If not, try and get NAIA, NCAA Division III, the highest level that you possibly can, you need to make that your mission and your goal to do it. If you're not eligible for college anymore, then try and get to the D League, or just try and get on a semi-pro team at the highest level you can and compete the best that you possibly can. And if you're Canadian, try and get to the Canadian U Sports. And if you're still in high school or junior college, then really try and make that leap to four-year university because that experience is really gonna pay off. It's really hard to make the jump from junior college or high school to a professional team overseas. And if you're playing for AAU or a shoe-sponsored team, then that's great exposure for getting a scholarship for a university in the US but it doesn't necessarily work well to get opportunities to play professional basketball overseas because you have to know that when you come overseas, even at 18 years old, you're still gonna be competing against professional players. You're gonna be competing against guys that are 34, 35 years old that have you know 20 years playing professional experience. So if your time has passed on college or university, then go the semi-pro route, try and get on the best competitive league or team that you possibly can and compete at the highest level that you possibly can. So for international players, the process is a little bit different. You need to try and get on the club team, the biggest club team in your home city or hometown or the, the neighboring town. If you have the possibility of playing for your home, your national team, then definitely try and work towards that goal. That international exposure is really going to help you promote yourself throughout the world of professional basketball. Step two is get stats. So the higher the level of competition that you play in, the more value your stats are gonna have. If you go the NCAA Division I route and you're not getting any minutes, you're not playing, and you're not getting stats, then your chances of going overseas are gonna be a lot less, gonna be a lot more difficult for you to get that opportunity. It's a better option to select to go to an NCAA Division II or an NAI school and get lots of minutes and, and get great stats. The important thing is that you're getting that experience, you're getting those numbers, and you're showing teams and coaches that you know how to win and you know how to compete and that you're consistent when you do it. Another thing to focus on is with the stats is don't just go for points. Go for rebounds, steals. The most important value here in Europe is not necessarily how many points you score, but how much value you bring to your team. And that's done by an equation of how many points you score, how many shots you take, how many rebounds you get, how many steals, turnovers. You put all these numbers into that equation or that algorithm and it spits out a number. And in some places it's called an index number, others efficiency rating, others it's MVP. It just depends on where you're at, but that number is really valuable here in Europe. So with all that being said, make sure you know where to locate your stats, what website you can go to to get it and get that information so you can put it onto your resume. Step three is get video, get game film. Game film is the way that you're gonna show your talent, show your athleticism and show what you can bring to a team and your style of basketball play. Every team is gonna evaluate this before they make a decision on whether they're gonna sign you or not. What I usually recommend to our players is to get one highlight per season. So take all the film, take out all the best plays for each game that you have and make it into a highlight. And you can make it 
by section by section. So if you want to start with scoring and then go to defense and then go to rebounds, that's fine. If you want to just do one game at a time and just put all the best plays for each game that you have, that's fine as well. Try and put the best couple plays right at the beginning so you can really grab the people's attention. Teams are going to look at this and to get their attention and just show a brief glimpse of how you play, how you move, your athleticism, how you shoot the ball, how you dribble. And then that will play over into whether they want to watch a full game or spend the time to watch an hour and a half game. Now you need at least two full games. The highlight is by no means a substitution for full game. Any team that's gonna sign you is gonna wanna watch that full game and see how you react in all situations. This is a two full game minimum. I would recommend to get more if you possibly can, but only get the best film that you can. If you have a game that you just played so-so, then I wouldn't upload that onto YouTube and I wouldn't show it. I would get the games where you play your absolute best and put those up on the web and put those on your resume so that you can send to teams. And remember, the best game or the highest quality game does not mean the most points you score. It's also the defensive plays that you make because if you're scoring 20 points and you're letting the guy that you're defending also score 20 or 25, it just kind of cancels you out. So make sure that the game that you're putting up, you're doing well on everything. You're covering every aspect of the game because if a team sees that you're just focused on scoring and you don't play any defense or you don't understand how to play defense, then you're not gonna be interesting for them and they're gonna be on to the next one. Make sure that you have control of your own game film. Don't give it to somebody else for them to upload. You make your own YouTube or Vimo accounts that you have access to, that you can modify, you could upload and take off game film if you want or upload it or change the de descriptions for each of the videos uh, update the dates wh what have you you need to have control of that the memberships are free and you can upload as many videos as you want and remember every year you're going to be uploading video whether it be full games highlights you need that access so you can continue to update your game film what is acceptable video you really need to pay attention to this the quality of the competition that you're playing in is crucial because if you're playing games in YMCA or in 24 hour fitness open gyms, that's not going to be credible. Teams overseas are not going to pay any attention to that game film. The games have to look organized. They have to be playing some type of system and have good quality defense and good competitive atmosphere. So you need to be playing in the most organized system that you can, in the most competitive league that you can, playing against adults. If you're playing against a bunch of juniors or a bunch of little kids, teams are gonna see that and they're gonna say, okay, that's not the competition that they're gonna be playing in if they sign with our team. They're gonna be playing against professional players, adult players, grown men, and I wanna see how they compete against that level of competition. You have to know that these teams, these coaches, these agents, people that are scouting you, they know basketball. They've been living basketball their whole lives. They've played basketball their whole lives. They've coached basketball half their lives. And so they've seen a lot of basketball. So if you send them some film where you're just playing in an open gym or in YMCA or somebody's not playing deep, they're gonna know right away and they're not even gonna pay attention. For American players, NCAA, Division I, Division II, NAIA, all these type of leagues are great. Canadian players, U Sports, also great. This is the best kind of film that you can get as an American offering to teams overseas because it's organized, because it's structured, because there's coaching, there's high competition, there's good players. It's, it's an organized system and that's what's important and that's what teams want to see overseas. If the time for university has passed, you're not eligible anymore, then get into a semi-pro league. This is the next best in the US. I mean, obviously, if you can get to the NBA or the G League, great. That's probably gonna be the best film available. But if that's not an option, semi-pro teams are the next best option. Obviously, some semi-pro leagues and teams are better organized than others. Try and get to the most organized league and the best organized team 
so that you can get good quality game film. Because if you get into a league that's lower level, the competition isn't good, it's not very organized, and people aren't, or players are not playing defense, then it's not really gonna help you. How you can judge if it's organized or not is teams are actually practicing multiple times a week. So you're running systems, you're running plays, you're playing team defense, your coach is correcting you. That's more of an organized atmosphere. If you guys just get together on the weekends to play games, that's not organized and chances are nobody's gonna watch it overseas. And that's gonna bring me into the next type of game film that you can get. Overseas basketball combines, showcases in the US, and exposure camps in the US. This type of game film will not be accepted. Now, let me be clear. This type of game film is not gonna be accepted overseas. It's not organized basketball. And as much as these people try and sell it to you, that they're gonna film you, that they're gonna live stream it, chances are nobody's gonna watch it because it's not organized basketball. You can't bring together 10 players that have never played together before, throw a ball on the court, put coaches on either side and a referee and expect there to be good basketball and people to be able to evaluate it. Especially when one player is at one level and another player is at another level and one's coming from division one and the other one's never played basketball before in his life and now they're supposed to compete against each other and it's supposed to be good basketball. So don't pay money to go to an exposure camp or an exposure combine in the US expecting to get good quality game film to send to teams overseas. Okay, granted, you could show that you're in shape and that you're not injured. That part you can, you can get from overseas basketball combines in the US or exposure camps in the US. But the type of film that a team needs to see to evaluate if you can play professional basketball overseas or not, you're not gonna get it at one of those combines or camps. Overseas basketball tour game film. Now this is another option. And some of these overseas tours provide good game film because you're actually playing games against teams overseas. Other ones are not so good. It just depends on which tour, which company you're using, and what time of the year you're going overseas. If you're going overseas, say to Europe in the middle of the summer, chances are you're not gonna be playing games against European teams because no teams are formed yet. They're still looking at signing players. So you're gonna be playing against a group of players that all come together, that are on their summer vacation, that get together to, to play games. If you come during a season, like in September, October, or later, then chances are you're gonna be playing against European teams. And that game film is probably gonna be pretty useful. Basketball academies like Euro Pro Basket is another option for getting high quality game film. Workout videos. These type of videos nobody's really paying attention to. Workout film will rarely get you an opportunity playing overseas. Just film of you shooting, of you doing workouts, lifting weights, uh, different post moves or different guard moves. This teams usually don't look at this type of stuff or make any evaluation whether they're gonna sign you or not. Now, if a team is interested in you, they've seen all your film from the previous season and they wanna know if you're in shape right now, maybe they'll ask you for some type of workout film just to see your physical shape and to see you moving and, and working, the fact that you're not injured and that you're ready to, to compete. But again, this type of film is not going to be a decision maker whether you're going to sign with the team or not. Mixtapes. Now, the mixtapes look cool. Everybody loves them now. It's great. You can put it up on social media. All your friends are liking it and commenting on it. But honestly, they're not going to help you whatsoever. The slow-mo movements of you high-fiving your teammates or walking onto the court or tying your shoes, I'm sorry, it's, it's not going to help. It looks great and it's cool to put up on Instagram and Facebook and uh, TikTok, but honestly, it's not gonna help you get a team. So if you're investing money into those mixtapes to try and get an opportunity overseas, you're wasting your money and you're wasting your time. Focus on real highlights, real highlights of your college experience, playing games or of your semi-pro or of some type of basketball academy or overseas tour that you did. Euro Pro Basket game film. Players in the Euro Pro Basket program play games every week against European teams. Each player in the program is put into a team, a Euro Pro Basket team, and we compete against local teams in Europe. 
They could be teams from inside and around the area of Valencia, or they could be teams from outside that travel to practice and play games in our facilities. We even get visits from NCAA Division I and Division II universities. If you're lacking in the game film aspect and you need some good quality game film, look no further than EuroPro Basket. We're gonna get you the best game film possible, playing against actual European teams, being coached by professional European basketball coaches, and in one of the best facilities and environments available for basketball development. Step four, get a passport. You're gonna need that passport to travel and to leave your country, but you're also probably gonna need it to register for an international club or team. Make sure you take care of that before you make your plans to go overseas. Dual citizenship and its benefits of playing basketball overseas. So you guys may have heard of players that have dual citizenship or two passports, like me. I have my American passport and I have my Uruguayan passport. And I can use either one to travel in and out of various countries. I can also use either one to register for a team. If your parents were born in another country or even sometimes your grandparents born in another country and then immigrated to the United States or to someplace else, then you have a good possibility of being able to get another passport or another citizenship. We highly recommend that you do it. And it's one of the first things we tell Euro Pro Basket players when they arrive if, or even before they arrive to work on the possibility of getting that other passport. So why is having dual citizenship or dual passports beneficial to overseas basketball. So let's use this as an example. In Spain, in the top three divisions, they only allow two import players. So that's two players from the US, from Canada, from Australia, from outside of the European Union. So of those two players, there's a registration fee and it's much higher than it is for players that are local, that are European or continent. And we'll get more into continent in a few seconds. Also, these European players, they don't need any type of visa to work legally and stay legally here in Europe. And there's more spots available on the roster. They're gonna pay a less fee and they're not gonna have to do any type of visa paperwork. That gives players with double nationalities or double citizenships more benefit and more options to sign with teams. There's more roster spots, it's cheaper, and it's easier for the team. So for me, for example, I have two passports. I have my American passport and I have my Uruguayan passport. When I go to Uruguay to play, I play as a Uruguayan. So they don't have to use the two roster spots that they have for the American players or for the import players. They can use this Uruguayan spot and they have a lot of spots for Uruguayans. So my value, in Uruguay is much higher because I have this passport. And I probably can have a much longer and more successful career because of this passport. Bossman A, Bossman B, and Continent. What type of passports are these? And what are the differences and what are the benefits? A Bossman A passport is basically a European passport. So these passports are for citizens of the European Union. All these countries are part of Europe, they're in the European Union, and they're considered Bossman A. These type of players need no visas to live or to work in Europe. Bossman B. Bossman B passports or countries are European countries that are not in the European Union. So these are countries like Serbia, Ukraine, basically countries that are in Europe, but not part of the European Union. These passports have benefits here in Europe but they're not quite as beneficial as the Bossman A passports because players with Bossman B passports still need visas to work and to live in Europe. A lot of times there are roster spots available just for these Bossman A and Bossman B passport holders. Continue passports. Continue passports are basically passports coming from developing countries such as Africa or the Caribbean islands. So you would see a lot of countries like Nigeria, Senegal, Cameroon, and other countries like Haiti or Jamaica. Many leagues in Europe like Spain and Portugal and Italy and Germany and France, they have certain allowances for continue passport holders. So they may have some roster spots just for continue players. You still will need a visa to live and to work in Europe though.
Step five, make a player bio, resume, or CV. And if you're wondering what this is, it basically is a document or a website with all of your information. So it's gonna have your personal information like name, height, position, birthday, and it's also gonna have your basketball information, like what teams you played for, your stats, your video links, your highlight links, any accolades or awards that you received throughout the course of your career. So it's basically gonna be like a work resume, but for basketball. What we recommend is that you save it in a PDF. If it's not on a website that you made or that you control, save it on a PDF so that you can easily send it out to teams. In an article and another video, we explain how to make a player bio or resume so that you can make your own and you can do it the right way with the right information. You can find more information about that in the description below. Step six is network. Networking is essential for any business and basketball is no exception. The bigger network that you have, the more contacts that you have, the more opportunities you're gonna be exposed to. Use current contacts with your coaches or your former coaches, your trainers, friends, or former teammates to help you make more contacts in the future. With social media, it's so easy to get contacts and to network. And every year, things are getting easier and making connections and new contacts are getting easier. Make sure that you have all the social media accounts so you can get in touch and network with people from different platforms. And when you create these profiles, if you don't already have them for Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, make sure that you use your real name. Don't use a name like I dunk on you 23 or something like that. Use your real name so that when somebody wants to get a hold of you, they can. All they have to do is type your name in a Google search and they're gonna find your information and be able to send you a message. This has happened to me personally many times throughout my career. An agent or a team or a coach sees one of my games and they want to get a hold of me. So all they do is put my name in the search, they find my Facebook or my Instagram or my LinkedIn or my Twitter and they send me an, an instant message and I'm able to communicate with them directly. Step seven, find an agent. The right basketball agent is gonna have the contacts and the know-how to get you started in your professional career overseas. There's so much you need to know about basketball agents though. And that's why we provided a video and an article on just that. You can find more information on that in the detailed description below. Step eight, best opportunities to play basketball overseas. So you've attempted steps one through seven and you're still unable to play overseas. What do you do next? We're gonna go through the different options right here. Visit the country that you wanna play. So if you wanna play in Japan, for example, and you know somebody that's playing in Japan, or you know a coach or a trainer or somebody over there, make a trip to Japan. Stay with that person, make some contacts, and try and go get a trial with the team. I've heard of players that have done this in the past and been successful. I've also heard of a lot of players that have spent a lot of money doing this and not having any success whatsoever. This is an option. Whether it's the best option or not, that's for you to decide. Your chances are gonna be much higher to be signed to a team if you're in that country already and you're able to present yourself and show yourself to that team. Whether that team has spots available on their roster or they're looking for a player in your position, that's up to you and the team. You have to make sure you're communicating with them and asking them about that. But chances are you're gonna have way better luck signing with the team if they can see you personally. Overseas Combine in the US, Exposure Camp, or Showcase Camp. Showcases in the US and Overseas Basketball Combines are really hit or miss. You have a lot of promises, a lot of different options. I would say 90% of them are not what they say they are. Seems like every day there's new events and new exposure camps coming out. Whether they're legit or not, that's up to you to do your research and to find out information about their success. What I would do is research the people that are hosting the camp. Do they have any experience in getting players on teams? I would also read some reviews or talk with some players that have been to those programs in the past. I see exposure camps that are promising all kinds of results but not delivering anything. So you need to do the research to find out the real information. I also see exposure camps that buy followers, buy likes, buy video views, and buy Google reviews. 
everything's basically fake. They just pay for everything and make it look legitimate. You have to do the research and find out if it's legitimate or not. If you really care about your opportunity, make sure you dig deep, you talk with players that have been there, you do your research about the people that are putting the program on, and you find out if this is actually gonna be a legitimate opportunity. If you don't have experience playing high-level basketball in college, NCAA Division I, NCAA Division II, or some type of professional experience playing basketball, then how is an exposure camp in the U.S. going to help you. It's not the exposure that you need, it's the experience that you need. Teams have a plethora of options when they're looking at signing players for certain positions. You could be a hundred players applying for the same position. Why are they going to choose you over somebody else? And is going to set so-and-so exposure camp going to get you more experience than not going to? No. The video isn't gonna help you. The connections that they have a lot of times aren't even real. So how is it gonna help you? You have to understand how teams evaluate players. They wanna see players with experience. They wanna see players that have winning on their resume. And if these exposure camps or overseas basketball combines are promising that coaches are gonna travel from overseas to come and watch you in the US, I would really, question that. In all my experience of being overseas and helping players get opportunities, talking with coaches and teams and managers and presidents, they don't have, teams over here don't have the budget to fly somebody to the U.S. to evaluate a bunch of players. It's too expensive. You're talking about a flight, hotel, transportation, meals. Who's going to pay for that? Is the team going to pay for it? Is the coach going to pay for it? Chances are it's not going to happen and it's not something that they're interested in doing. It's much easier just to contact and call an agent and say, hey, give me your best player or send me the best few players that you have available. Live streams, don't believe it because people over here do not watch live streams of overseas basketball combines in the US. First of all, just look at the time difference. I'm in Spain, we're six hours ahead of East Coast time. That's nine hours ahead of West Coast time. What are the chances that some coach or agent or scout here in Europe is going to be paying attention to a game playing in an open gym in the U.S. at 2 in the morning? So don't fall for the gimmick that all these camps and showcases in the U.S. are saying that this video is going to be live streamed all over the world because people aren't watching it. The type of camps and showcases that I would recommend is like an agent or an agency showcase or camp. This is something an agent or an agency is gonna put on to find maybe one or two players in their area to represent. Maybe they have one or two roster spots left in their agency and they wanna try and fill it with the player in, in the area that they can meet and talk to personally. So they'll put on one of these events to try and evaluate some players. And then they will work to find that player an opportunity overseas. It doesn't guarantee you an opportunity, it just guarantees you that somebody will help you find an opportunity overseas. Basketball academies and overseas tours. These options obviously take a little bit bigger of an investment because you're going to be traveling overseas to do them. So you're going to have to pay for the program plus the flight and transportation. But honestly, it's the best opportunity. If you put yourself in front of the teams, if you travel to their location and you play in front of them and you play against them, then you're gonna have a way better opportunity of signing with the team. Not to mention that the game film you're gonna get playing against European teams or overseas basketball teams is gonna be way more beneficial. If you're considering whether doing a couple of camps in the US or going overseas and doing one, I highly recommend saving your money on those camps in the US and traveling overseas and putting yourself in that type of an environment to get your opportunity. You're not only gonna see the place that you could potentially play in, you're gonna potentially live there for a short amount of time. You're gonna eat the food, hear the language, uh, be exposed to the culture and you're gonna be exposed to the basketball. Now it depends on when you travel, what type of competition you're gonna be playing against. A basketball tour is great for that, but you have to remember you're gonna be traveling multiple different places, playing in different arenas, staying in different hotels, eating in different restaurants, 
and it's going to take you a while just to adjust to the different time. The downsides of a tour is that they can be very short and really quick and compact. So you're going from city to city, playing games in different environments, in different gyms, and some of them are organized and some of them are really unorganized. You're gonna be tired, you're gonna have jet lag, you're gonna be eating food that you're not used to, you're gonna be traveling around a lot, so you're gonna be extremely tired and exhausted. What I would recommend is go to a basketball academy, one location based in one city, so that you're staying in the same hotel, you're eating in the same restaurant, and you're training with the same team. If you're doing something with a tour, you're probably not gonna be practicing a lot and you're not gonna be able to get adjusted to your team. Whereas if you go to an academy or someplace based in one location, you're gonna be practicing with that team and developing with that team. And then you're gonna play games against local teams. Now there's a lot of benefits to that. Euro Pro Basket is a prime example. Our players come here, they form a team, they practice as a team, they are coached by professional European coaches, and they play against European teams. So that film is very useful for them to get an opportunity in the near future and to be able to use for the long term. But you have to be careful which academy and which program you go to. Just like anything, if you're gonna make an investment, do your research. Talk with players that have been in the program in the past. Look online for different reviews. If those reviews are from third world countries and they don't look legitimate, chances are they're not because a lot of these programs, they pay for Google reviews. Essentials for playing overseas basketball. So you already went through steps one through seven and you're still not successful at getting a team overseas. These are the things that you're gonna have to focus on to make yourself more successful. Complete your collegiate playing career. For an American player, getting that collegiate experience, the full collegiate experience, is gonna be one of the most important things for your future in professional basketball. There's no better place in the US or Canada to get high level coaching, high level competition, good film, good stats, all in one package than the collegiate system. For Americans, there's just no substitution for the four years of mental, physical, extensive knowledge, education, and maturity that you're gonna get from a collegiate basketball season. And if you try and skip all that and get to a professional league overseas, it's gonna be extremely difficult. Especially when teams overseas have the option of signing players that have had those four years of experience. That's not to mention the actual degree that you get from that experience. And the fact that you don't even have to pay for it, that you're gonna get a scholarship that covers all four of those years. And that can be anywhere from 30,000 to 80,000 per year. You're never going to get that back. So you have a small window to use that to your advantage. That's a guaranteed peace of mind when you're overseas playing basketball, that you have something to fall back on, that you have a career that you can pursue when your basketball season is over, when your basketball career is over, if you get injured, or if you just get tired of traveling all over the world and you want to start a family that degree is gonna be your key to success after your basketball career. So the message is stay in school, get your degree. Utilize those four years to your benefit. You're gonna be way more successful, not only in basketball after, but in life in general. Stay prepared, physically and mentally, stay prepared. The worst thing that can possibly happen is that you finally get an opportunity and you're out of shape and you haven't been trained. And it's been weeks since you've touched a basketball court, since you ran a few miles. This is the worst possible scenario because you're gonna break relationships with whoever got you that opportunity and whatever team is giving you that opportunity. If you show up to that team out of shape, they're gonna know it right away and they're gonna cut you and send you home and never give you another opportunity. You should be doing everything in your power to stay in the best shape possible. And I know it's difficult because you probably have another job on the side or you're supporting your family, what have you, everybody has their thing, 
But if you want to make playing professional basketball your life and your career, then you have to be in shape at all times. That means lifting weights, conditioning, and conditioning can be running, it can be sprinting, it can be riding bikes, swimming, mountain running, or jogging, or climbing, or hiking, whatever you wanna do, just integrate all those workouts into your conditions. Because it's not like you just have to run. There's different things that you can do to keep yourself in a shape that's more motivating for you and more fun for you. You should be getting into the gym every single day as well, doing skills work, ball handling, shooting, and then whatever type of playing you can do. If you can play in open gyms, if you can play at your former university in their open runs, if you can get part of a semi-pro team in the US and play with their team, great. You should be playing, keeping that rhythm. And if you're not sure how to prepare yourself, then hire a professional trainer to do it. Hire them to create a plan that you can follow and you can use to prepare yourself for a basketball season. And the last thing, and this is a reiteration from step six, is network and make new contacts. Use some time every day to reach out to people and make new contacts. And when you meet new people in basketball, exchange contact information. If you meet a coach or a player that plays overseas or that coaches overseas, go up to them, introduce yourself and exchange information. Thanks for paying attention and watching the video. If you guys have any questions about anything, please throw them in the comments below. You have all of our information in the description. Feel free to reach out to us if you're interested in any of our programs or any new information. If you like the video, please like it and subscribe if you wanna see more. We hope this video has helped organize you, giving you information on how you can get your start playing professional basketball overseas.